Hello, my name is Lloyd Chapman, and I'm the president founder of the American Small Business League. I'd like to talk to you about a recent report that's come out by Public Citizen titled Slighted. It's about the diversion of federal small business contracts to Fortune 500 firms and the SBA's policy of cheating small businesses by um, fabricating small business contracting numbers. The subtitle is Accounting Tricks Create False Impression That Small Businesses Are Getting Their Share of Federal Procurement Money and the Political Factors That Might Be at Play. So I'm glad Public Citizen did this report. I think the, the kindest thing I can say about this report is they're soft peddling a trillion in felony contracting fraud. Uh, they're sugarcoating it. And the strongest word I would use is, I would say they're probably, I think they were probably pressured to cover it up. And I'll tell you why. Um, there's been a series of failed investigations that have found fraud in federal small business contracting. If, if, if you're working for the government, and you're doing something that's illegal. That's fraud. And again, that, those aren't my words. That's the words that have come from the uh, Government Accountability Office and Inspector Generals from other federal agencies. And in this, in this 8,000 word document, the word fraud isn't in there anywhere. The word illegal isn't in there. Here's the words that, that uh, Public Citizen has used to describe felony federal contracting fraud. Let's see here. Uh, the first one they used was, it's a phenomenon. Errors, inaccurate government records, misreporting, errors by the government, erroneously calculated, incorrect reporting, misapplication of the small business contracting rules, inaccurate data, does not appear to be a basis in law, does not meet requirements to qualify as a small business, inflated, does not necessarily present a true picture. Significant anomalies, dereliction to comply with request, shortchanged, inflate the reported share, errors that categorize large business as small and riddled with errors, anomalies, and exceptions. So this all looks like it's just sort of like um, random. Uh, no one's doing anything illegal. No one's committing fraud. And the other thing about the report is no one's responsible. No one's held responsible. No one says that, you know, uh, Maria Couture's suite is guilty of conspiracy to commit contracting fraud. Mar Maria Couture's suite is falsifying and fabricating the diversion of federal small business contracts to Fortune 500 firms. There's not one named source here for the government. So in addition to not having the word fraud or illegal, there's, there's no name of one person who's employed by the federal government in there. To my recollection, the only person that's, that's named in there is um, myself. It's amazing. So he didn't interview anyone from the government on the record. I take it back. It, there's, there's a phrase in there from an SBA spokeswoman. That's not investigative journalism. Can you imagine the New York Times, the LA Times, the Washington Post doing a story and, and, and not mentioning the person's name? So again, this was designed to, to sugarcoat, soft pedal, and cover up fraud. Fraud, 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 fraud. You know, not erroneously calculated, misreported, uh, phenomenon, errors inflated. That's, that's absurd. It's very disappointing that Public Citizen, which I would think would be one of the most rec reputable uh, government watchdog groups in Washington, even they are pressured to do this. By the way, I, I, clearly they were pressured to do this. Um, you know, there was a story that came out in the news a few months ago that said 38 journalistic organizations sent a letter to President Obama asking him to stop politically driven uh, censorship and suppression of the news. And in that story, it came out that if you're a journalist in Washington and you write stories that are not flattering to the Obama administration, you're blacklisted, you're blackballed, and they won't talk to you anymore. So my guess is that if Taylor Lincoln had written the story like, like it should have been written, and pointed out the fact that this is felony federal contracting fraud and that the people at the SBA are intentionally violating the law, he'd be out of a job. When this gentleman called me, I said, there's three things that you need to talk about and only three. So every year for the last 15 physical years has come out 
that um, Fortune 500 firms here in the U.S. and some of the biggest companies around the world have gotten federal small business contracts. And every year, the SBA says it's miscoding, computer glitches, anomalies, and simple human error. So I said, Taylor, send an email to SBA spokesman Terry Sutherland and ask him three questions. Number one, can you explain to me why these random errors do not have a random pattern of distribution? On a federal contract, it says, are you a small business or a large business? Like heads or tails, left or right, up or down. And a, a random error would have a random pattern of distribution, like flipping a coin, and half the time a contract to a large business would be misreported as a small business contract, and half the time a contract to a small business would be misreported as a large business contract. They would cancel themselves out. We don't see that. What we see is what they call as, you know, all, all these errors in the phenomenon and erroneously calculated and incorrect reporting and inaccurate data and significant anomalies always cheat small businesses every day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. He did not ask the SBA to explain that because they can't. They'd have to admit, well, you know, that's a lie. The second thing I asked him to do is talk about their exclusionary rule. The Small Business Act is very clear. It says small businesses shall receive a minimum of 23% of the total value of all federal contracts. What the SBA does to inflate that percentage and fabricate and, and lie about the fact that they've hit that goal is they use a much smaller budget and they call it the exclusionary rule. Well, that's illegal. To me, when you engage in illegal activity, you're committing fraud. So their exclusionary rule is illegal and it's fraudulent and they're using it to cheat the middle class small businesses. I ask him to ask them in writing to provide him with the sections of the Small Business Act that they use to justify the exclusionary rule. That is completely missing from this report. And the third thing I ask him to do is uh, to provide him with a section of the Small Business Act they use to explain what they call their five-year rule. Every year, the SBA includes billions in contracts to Fortune 500 firms as small business contracts. And they say, well, we've come up with this uh, five-year rule that says when a large business buys a small business, we let them keep that status for five years. It's illegal. It's fraudulent. There's no provision in the Small Business Act that says a large corporation can buy a small business and keep that status for five years. Quite the contrary. The Small Business Act is perfectly clear. It says a small business shall be independently owned, which means not publicly traded, and have no more than 1,500 employees. So there's absolutely no provision in the Small Business Act that would ever allow the SBA to include contracts to Fortune 500 firms and their subsidiaries or any large business as a small business award. It's illegal. It's fraudulent. Again, completely devoid from this report. Um, the other thing I think that was missing from the report is the fact that the American Small Business League is the only national organization that's ever objected to the version of federal small business contracts to Fortune 500 firms. An 8,000-page report. I think it's appropriate to mention that. I think that's a significant. And also mention the fact that not one Washington-based small business advocacy group has ever objected to it in any way. I've done 20, 30, 40 national television appearances talking about this. I've released hundreds of press releases and blogs. I've done over 100 radio shows. I've written legislation. Not mentioned in here. By the way, the other thing he doesn't mention is I've written a bill that's going to be introduced into Congress for the fourth time, the Fairness and Transparency and Contracting Act, that would stop this. Makes no mention of it. 8,000 words doesn't have one sentence to mention Lloyd Chapman's bill that's been introduced three times and hopefully will be introduced a fourth time, the Fairness and Transparency and Contracting Act, to stop all this fraud and abuse. Um, but anyway, it's just very, it's very frustrating. Um, Again, um, it, it's, it's any mention of fraud and illegal activity is conspicuously absent. Typical Washington report on this issue for 12 years. No fraud. Nothing. It's illegal. No one's responsible. No one's going to be prosecuted. No one's going to jail. None of the companies are guilty of fraud. Um, it's very sad. There's been a slew 
of federal investigations have found these companies are, are committing felony federal contracting fraud. I, I've got a lot of them memorized. Uh, in 2005, the SBA Inspector General released Report 516 that said large businesses are getting federal small business contracts by making fault certifications and improper certifications. That's fraud. The SBA Office of Inspector General in 2004 released a report that said that vendor deception is why large corporations get small business contracts. That's fraud. 20 years ago, in 1995, the SBA Inspector General released a report talking about a particular fraudulent practice where large corporations were misrepresenting themselves as small businesses. And in 2009, the, the Government Accountability Office released a report uh, on the SBA that said, um, by failing to hold firms accountable, the SBA and contracting agencies have sent a message to the contracting community that there's no punishment or consequences for committing fraud. And Report 514 that was released uh, over 10 years ago, it, 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 it specifically says that the SBA policy of reporting awards to large businesses as small business awards uh, is, is, I think they call it inconsistent with the law, which is illegal. If you're doing something that's inconsistent with the law, that's illegal. And again, it's just um, disappointing. But again, uh, the fact is that um, the SBA is committing contracting fraud, large corporations are committing fraud, small businesses are being cheated out of hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars, and this investigation, I'm glad they did it. It's better than nothing. But what a disappointing, soft peddling, sugar coating, and borderline cover up of over 15 years of felony federal contracting fraud and federal small business contracting programs. I'm Lloyd Chapman, the American Small Business League. Thanks for watching.